Okay, students, this is day 13. Maybe you're getting to it a little early. This is where we're going to go over every single problem type that's going to be on the midterm. This midterm is going to be, this, I'm going to give you a sample midterm. You have it already. We're going to go through every answer right now. Every problem, every answer, how you do it. The, the final is going to be an exact clone. It's an exact clone of what I'm giving you. You should get do very well on this. It'll be different numbers and different problems, but you're going to see the number of problem types, the points, the types of problems, the order in which you'll see them. It's going to be almost exactly the same. So let's do great on this midterm. Let's get to it. If you know how to do most of this, just fast forward if you know how to get to the problems you want to see or just watch it all and super fast forward. I don't know. Use this to your advantage. Let's get on with it and let's go through this Sample, midterm. All right, combine like terms. Uh, all right, what do we have here? We have we can remove the parentheses on this first first one because it's kind of like a positive one out here, but this is like a negative at one. So we're going to have to make sure we distribute that negative or switch the signs, however you like to think about it, on that second set of parentheses. So we're going to subtract x and subtract our y. Subtract y. We've got to flip both signs. And... When we combine terms, we're going to combine our x's, and we're going to combine our y's. Our y's cancel, and we just get x off and running. Now, we want to write as the sum or difference of simplified fractions. In other words, we need to rewrite this and uh, split this out into three separate fractions. Why three separate fractions? Because we have three terms on top. So let's write this out. 6x over 6 plus 2. 6x over 6 plus 2y over 6 minus 18 over 6. So we, our 6 is cancel and we're left with an x. Our 1 is a 3 and our 3 becomes, uh, x6 becomes a 3 because we're dividing top and bottom by 2. Uh, and then 18 with 6 cancels and we get a 3. So we get x plus y over 3 minus 3. Let's write it really clearly. Good. All right. Now, on this next one, 10 is 20% of what number? Now, how do we do these types of problems? Well, we, we is is equals, of is times. What number becomes x? 0.2, we have to convert to a decimal before we do our math, and we say 10. So we get 10 equals 0.2x. A lot of ways to go from here. Uh, we can multiply both sides. Uh, but really, the simplest thing to do is divide both, thing, both sides by 0.2, and we get x equals 50. Another, there's a couple other ways to solve this. One thing you could do is multiply both sides by 10, and then you'd get 100 equals 2x. Multiply that by 10 and that by 10, and then you get x equals 50. A lot of ways to do this. All right, simplifying this. I don't want to just see you type this into your calculator, which you are allowed to use. So let's make sure that you do this in the right order. Well, we do our parentheses first. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1 times 4 minus 5. Now we have to do our multiplication next. So we get uh, negative 4 uh, minus 5, and then we get minus 4 minus 5 is negative 9, minus 9, negative 9. Okay. Now, 2, 3 is called a blank pair. The only word that fits here is ordered pair, ordered pair. There may be some other word you can think of. If you can think of another one that fits well, I'll, I'll accept it, but the word I'm thinking of is ordered pair. We talked about ordered pairs, solutions, points on a Cartesian plane. It is located in the what quadrant? Well, let's look at our quadrants. Our quadrants, we remember, are one, two, let me not circle them. Say one, two, three, four, and this one's positive two, positive three. It's over here, so it's in the first or first quadrant. Ordered pair, first quadrant. Good. We uh, Hopefully we have a... Uh, have a hundred so far. Perfect, per, uh, perfect score. All right, now you guys, proportions are so, are solved with cross 
multiplication. Cross multiplication when we see proportions. So multiply these two numbers and set them equal to these two numbers. So 3 times 16 equals 4x. 3 times 16 is uh, pull out your calculator if you need, but it's 48 equals 4x. So x equals 12. Cross multiply here and cross multiply here. 3 times 5 equals 15. The whole thing times the whole thing, so we have to put this in parentheses. So that's 15 equals 15 times x minus 4. Well, cancel my 15s because we're, well, you know, divide both sides by 15 is another way to think about it. And I get 1 equals x minus 4. Add 4 to both sides, and I get x equals 5. There's multiple ways to get to this answer. That's the fastest way I can think of. All right, cross multiply again, and we get 8 times x plus 3, and 2 equals 2 times x, 3x plus 1. Let's divide both sides by 2 first, and let's get 4 times x plus 3 equals 3x plus 1. So I get distribute 4x plus 16 equals 3x plus 1, and over here I get minus 3x, uh, and then we'll subtract 16 from both sides, and we'll get x equals negative 15. Uh, is that right? Is that right? Did I do all of my math right? Negative 15 is negative 12, 8 times negative 12, and negative 15 here is... Oh, I mistyped, I mistyped my answer. That should have been a 3. I copied x plus 3 and copied it down to x plus 4. So I copied it wrong. Good thing I was checking because I said, well, 8 times negative 12, does that equal 2 times negative 44? Plus? That's not going to work out. So let's, get, let's go back and let's fix this problem. Good thing Mr. Lipscomb checks his work. Or maybe I was just setting you up. Equals... Uh, 3x plus 1, 4x, do my distribution, 4x plus 12 equals 3x plus 1. Subtract 3x, subtract 3x, subtract 12, subtract 12, and I get x equals negative 11. Well, negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8, so 8 times 8, negative 8. Does that equal 2 times, 3 times negative 11 is negative 33 plus 1 times negative 32, so negative 64 equals negative 64. So I'll be happy with that solution, and that is our right answer. Okay, let's move on. Is the point 5, negative 5 on the line? Well, how do you do that? Well, you plug your, you know, this is an x, y coordinate. If it's on the line, it's got to make this true. So let's put our x in for x and our y in for y. So, um, oh, but we also know that 5, negative 5 is on the line because this is in point slope form. It's in point slope form where our point is 5 comma negative 5 is on the line. I don't even have to do the math. If I did the math though because I forgot that this was in point slope form, I would say well 5 plus y plus negative, sorry, plugging these numbers in, I get negative 5 plus 5. Does that equal 9 times 5, there's my x, minus 5. Well, this is 0 equals 9 times 0, and I get a yes. So the answer is yes. So what line is perpendicular to the point, to the line y equals 3x plus 3? Well, the line perpendicular has to have a negative reciprocal of 3, so my, uh, my slope has got to be negative 1 third, and it's got to, it has the point negative 1, 5. So I can write my answer in point slope form. And so my point is y minus 5, because 5 is my y coordinate. My slope is negative 1 third. And then I get x plus 1. x minus a negative 1 is x plus 1. And this is a, my line, a perpendicular line to that point. If you want to convert this into slope intercept form, you can, or into standard form, you can, but it doesn't ask you to, so I would stop here and not make any more mistakes. Now, are the following lines parallel? 
Well, what's the slope of parallel lines have the same slope. And this has a slope of m equals 2. And this has a slope of m equals negative 2. So these are not parallel because they have different slopes. What's Mr. Lipscomb trying to do? He's trying to trick you because the slopes look like they might be the same, but one's negative and one's positive. All right, write the equation of the horizontal line whose y-intercept is 0, 0,3. So we have, a, a, we have a, a line here that looks like this, and it goes through 0, 0,3. And horizontal lines have equations y equals and y equals 3. All right, we hopefully have 100 so far. Let's keep moving along. Let's switch colors to blue just because we can. Find the midpoint of negative 4, 3, and 10, 9. Well, this midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, and that's going to be negative 4 plus 10 over 2, which is equal to 3. That's my x-coordinate. And my y-coordinate is 3 plus 9 over 2, which is equal to 6. So my answer is 3 comma 6. Be sure to write it as in a – it asks for a point, so my answer should be as a point. All right, find the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line containing the points 3, 2, and 9, 4. Now, this is a little bit more involved. Remember how we do this. We have to find our slope first. And we want it in slope-intercept form. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do it, but let's get our slope first, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so that's going to be 4 minus 2 over 9 minus 3. That equals 2 over 6, or 1 third. So this is our slope. Part of the way there. Now we can use either point. Now some people like to go and say, well, let's get y equals mx plus b. And then you go about plugging in your a point here and then finding your b and then setting it equal. I like to go a different route. I like to use point slope form and say, well, y my, I'm going to use this point here. Say y minus 2 equals 1 third x minus 3. And then I'm going to go about converting this. So watch how easy this is. Well, a third times x and a third times negative 3, we get y minus 2 equals 1 third x minus 1. Add 2 to both sides, and we get y equals 1 third x plus 1, which is great. You could go the other route, and you could start here and say, well, let's find b. And we're going to use the point 3, 2. So let's put a 2 in for y, and then uh, 1 third x, which is 3 plus b. So we get 2 equals 1 plus b. b equals 1. And now I can rewrite this guy because I know my slope is 1 third and my b is 1. So I'll write y equals 1 third x plus 1. So however you like to do it, if you want to do it either way, you're going to get to the same answer. But the key was is that the answer has got to be in slope intercept form. Okay, find the x and y intercepts of the line th like this. Well, one thing we can do is we can just make it a little bit easier, subtract 2 from both sides and say, well, 5y equals negative 3x plus 15. Now i got to find my points. What does it mean to be the x and y intercept? Well, the x intercept is where y is 0, and my y intercept is where x is 0. So let's figure out what x is when y is 0. So we'll say, well, 5 times 0 equals negative 3 times x plus 15. So 0 equals negative 3x plus 15. So 3x equals 15. So x equals 5. So 5. So our x-intercept is 5 comma 0, or just 5, depending on how you – I mean – some people say that the x-intercept is the number 5. Some people say it's the point five zero. If you say, you know, or if you label this and you said x-intercept, I'd accept that. All right, now we've got to find when y uh, 
what's the y-intercept? So now we say, well, that's when x is 0. So 5y equals negative 3 times 0 plus 15. So 5y equals 15. So y equals 3. So that's our y-intercept. And you could say 0, 3. So either one of those is fine with me. All right, good. Moving along. Hopefully we're doing great. We're all excited. Maybe we need a drink of water. I don't know. Find a number A such that 2, 2 falls on this line. Well, if 2, 2 falls on this line, then these points, if I plug them in for X and for Y, it's got to make it true. So let's do that. So A times 2 plus 3 times 2 equals 24. So 2A plus 6 equals 24. So 2A equals, subtracting 6 from both sides equals 18. A equals 9. So my new equation is 9X plus 3Y equals 24. Convert the following equation into standard form. Okay, standard form is where my x's and y terms are on the left and my numbers are on the right. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that one over here. Y plus, let's do that one in a different color just so we don't get too confused here. So y plus 1 half equals negative 1 fourth x minus 2. So I'm going to get rid of my fractions. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. I can't just multiply one side by 4. I've got to multiply them both by 4. Um, to keep it balanced, 4y plus 2, got it. remember distribution, 4 times negative a fourth is equal to negative 1 times x minus 2. Keep going. We're going to do our distribution here. We get negative x plus 2, 4y plus 2. Oh, wow, this is working out nicely. Subtract 2 from both sides. I get 4y equals negative x. Got to get my x on the left. So add an x to both sides, and I get x plus 4y equals 0, and that is in standard form. All right, these are both integers, and we have a number on the right that's an integer. Cool. Let's, let's uh, kind of separate that guy off. Is negative 2, 4 on that line? Well, what do we do? We just plug in our x for x and plug in our y for y and see if it's true. If it's true, it does. 3 times negative 2 plus 4 times 4. Does that equal 12? Does negative 6 plus 16 equal 12? No, it does not. Substituting the point in does not make it true, so it is not on the line. All right, what is the slope of this guy? What is the slope and y-intercept? Well, this isn't in slope-intercept form, so we have to do that and say y equals 3x minus 4. So my slope is 3. My slope is 3, and my y-intercept is negative 4, or 0 comma negative 4. Either one. I'll take y-intercept equals negative 4 to negative 4 or zero, negative four, either one. All right, Mr. Lipscomb claims the following lines are perpendicular. Do you agree or not? Well, I gotta find my slopes and see if they're negative reciprocals. Well, this slope is one, and this slope is negative one. And one is a negative reciprocal. Yes, one and minus one are negative reciprocals. Yes. Notice how I'm boxing all my answers for the most part. Sometimes I'm circling, but really, I like to see them box. The box calls it out. It really, really calls it out. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, my goodness, we have a word problem. But let's see. Usually these word problems, are we can break them down. So let's get on with it. Rhea recorded quite a few kills in volleyball during the season before June. So in May, let's just call that, you know, like May. And then in June, she starts recording more kills. 
And the interesting thing is she records the exact same number of kills in every game she plays during the month. So every day and month. So she has the same kills per game in June. But she started off with some number here in May. So let's call that starting number the y-intercept, and that's before June. But after, in June, after seven games, after seven June games, she had recorded 132. So after seven, she had 132. And after one, here, let's fix this. After seven, she had 132. So this is games. June games, and then the number of kills total. After one, she had 96. And after zero, we don't know this, but this is our y-intercept here. Here, we don't know this number. Uh, so the question is, how many kills did she have So we, when, the, when June began? So we have to figure out this number. We have two points, though. We have two points. And we know that she, she had a constant number of kills per game. So that tells us what? That this is a linear equation. This is a linear equation. Okay. So let's look at this. If we know we have a point. So on our graph, we, you know, after one game, here's our games, and here's our kills. After one game, she had a certain number of kills, and after... You know, seven games, she had an, uh, even more kills. So this point here is 1, 96. And this point here is 7, 132. So we can find the slope. We can write a linear equation, find the slope, and then we can find our y-intercept. So let's just go about doing that. M equals, our slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now notice, probably question 21 through 24 on your midterm is going to be just like this. It's going to have different words, but you're going to look for the key points and try and find your slope. So don't, don't let that confuse you too much. So 132 minus 96 over 7 minus 1. So this is 36 over 6. So our slope is 6. And what are our units? Well, it's kills per game. She had 6 kills per game. That's our slope, right? Our y units, our y units over our x units. Well, we can also go about figuring out um, let's do our let's do our uh, let's we're going to need the slope intercept form of this line. So let's do that now. I'm going to use this point here, 1 in 96. One, y minus 96 equals 6 times x minus 1. So y minus 96 equals 6x minus 6. Add 96 to both sides. And our equation then is y equals 6x plus 90. So wow, we have our y-intercept. We have our starting point. This must be 90. Must be 90. So let's see. How many kills did Rita recorded when June began? That's 90. We could put our box here. We could have put our box, you know, here. How many kills per game did Rita record in June? Well, six kills per game. That's our slope. What is the equation in slope-intercept form? You could just... If you just put your arrow like this, I'd be okay with that. Or if you put a 23 here and circled it, I'd be okay with it. You could write it out by the side, you know. Well, you're going to be doing this on separate paper, so that's 23. And then 24, if she played 10 games in June, how many kills did she have by the end of June? Well, that just simply says, well, let's put a 10 here and figure out what this number is. So we'll say y equals 6 times 10. Our x is 10 plus 90. And so we get 60 plus 90, and that's 150 kills by end of June. Good. Moving right along. 
Moving right along. All right, so we're going to graph this without finding the y-intercept. So we, uh, I didn't make these nice little lines for you, so let's go ahead and make our lines here. Um, let's make these a little fatter. All right, let's, let, let, let's use black just for fun. All right, so what's a point? We know the point and the slope. Here a point is negative two, negative two, and then our slope is a half. So we start it, so what we do is we, we go ahead and plot this point that we know is on the line, and then we just use our slope. Go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. We can just keep going, but then we can go ahead and draw our line. And we're done, right? We can graph straight from slope intercept form. We can, um, sorry, a point slope form. We can make graph just like we can if it was in slope intercept form. All right, now we gotta solve this the second equation. We gotta solve by graphing. So this is a little bit more involved. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do this one. This is in slope intercept form. So I can just graph this one straight off. We go to negative two. And then we go, because uh, our slope is down to, it's negative two, we rise negative two and over one, down two, over one, down two. And then we can go backwards, you know, making sure our line's straight. And we, uh, we're going to make our line. All right, so that's one line. And now our second line is in, uh, this is easily graphed using, intercepts so if our x and y so I put our x here and our y here zero why is this easy to do in terms of intercepts because it's in standard form and 10 and 2 divide and 10 and 5 divide really nicely so uh, this would be 5 0 when y is 0 x is 5 when x is 0 though y is negative 2 so we say uh, 5 0 1 2 3 4 5 Oh, and it crosses right there. This is going to be easy, hopefully. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh. All right, there we go. Sorry. So we think, because it crosses here, we think our answer is 0, comma, negative 2. Um, okay, so let's make sure these things work out. Let's see. So I got to try. Now I found my, I did my graphing. That was step one was to graph. Two was to identify points. And three is to check your answer. You better check, check your answer. So, um, let's see. So two times zero minus five times negative two, does that equal 10? Uh, 10 equal 10, yes, and then y uh, does negative two equal negative two times zero minus two, negative two equal negative two, check, yes. So we're good, we got the right point. Now let's move along, and this says solve by substitution. Well, what's the key here on substitution? Well, x is the one we, it's the one that's primed for substitution. So we're going to take this 2y and put it right in here for x. Right? Get rid of the x here, and we're going to put our 2y in. So we get 3 times 2y plus 3y equals 27. 6y plus 3y equals 27. 9y equals 27. y equals 3. And if y is 
three, then I can go back and check. Does uh, or go back and substitute. We're going to find x here, and then here we're going to use this one to check. One we're going to use to substitute to find our x, and the other we're going to use to check. So I'm going to come here and plug in my y and say x equals 2 times 3, so x equals 6. Now I'm going to check with this guy. So does 3 times 6 plus 3 times 3 equal 27? Does 18 plus 9 equal 27? And the answer is yes. So here's my answer, 6 comma 3. Let's switch colors back to something more bright and cheery. All right, now we can solve using any method, and shoot, we have a fraction alert here. Let's do it using the method that, uh, let's do um, elimination. So we got x minus 2y equals 9, and 7x plus 4y equals 0. So we're going to, let's eliminate, let's eliminate our y. So we need to multiply this top one by 2, and the bottom will leave the same. So 2x minus 4y equals 18. And on the bottom, we get 7x plus 4y equals 0. So we get 9x equals um, 18. So x equals 2. Well, if x is 2, I know the other one's got to be a fraction because Mr. Lipscomb told me so. So we're going to let's check our answer with um, this one. And we'll do this one to solve for y. So let's bring our x minus 2y equals 9 down here. Substitute our x. You get 2 minus 2y equals 9. Uh, subtract 2 from both sides and get um, negative 2y equals 7. So y equals negative 7 halves. So now we're going to check with 7 times 2 plus 4 times negative 7 halves. Does that equal zero? Does 14 plus 4 times negative 7 halves cancel, cancel, 2, negative 14? Does that, does that equal zero? And the answer is yes. So our answer is 2 comma negative 7 halves. Write this as a point. Do our checks and everything. All right, good. Fraction alert. Uh-oh, another fraction alert. All right, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to use eliminate. Uh, I'm going to use, well, well, that's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my fractions. I want to multi So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. Get rid of my decimal. So I get 10x plus 10y equals 9. And now I have 10x plus 10y equals 9, and I have 10x plus 5y equals 7. So I'm going to multiply. I'm going to do elimination here. Watch this. So I'm just going to, these both, be, this all becomes negative. The whole bottom one becomes negative, and I can then eliminate my x's, and I get 5y equals 2. So y equals 2 fifths. So I'm going to check here, and I'm going to use this one to uh, find, my, uh, find my x over here. So x plus 2 fifths equals 0.9. And I'm going to rewrite that as 9 tenths because 0.9 is equal to 9 tenths. So now i got to say x plus 4 tenths equals 9 tenths. And so x equals 5 tenths or 1 half. So x equals 1 half. So now I'm going to do my check over here. Does 10 times a half plus 5 times 2 fifths, does that equal 7? Well, 10 times a half, half of 10 is 5. 5 times 2 fifths is 2. Does that equal 7? And the answer is yes. So my answer is 1 half comma 2 fifths. Box my answer, get out of Dodge. All right, now, now this is, okay, how many times do lines intersect? They either intersect zero parallel lines, one time if they have, if they're lines that 
uh, have different slopes, and then or infinite if they're the same line. So let's look at this. Well, these guys here clearly have different y-intercepts and the same slope. So same slope, different y-intercepts. So same slope, these are parallel lines. So these intercept is zero times. Over here, we have two lines that clearly have different, you know, they're in y equals mx plus b form. They have different slopes, so they will cross exactly one time. So this last one I'm betting is going to be uh, infinite, but let's just make sure. We, well, this one's in y equals mx plus b form, so it's m is 2, and it's b is 2 also. Over here, we have to divide by 2, divide everything by 2, divide every term by 2, and we get y equals 2x plus 2. Well, we have the same line because they have the same, they have not, they have the same equation and they have the same, so hence they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So these intersect infinite times because they're the same line. You could also write out infinite. Keep on going. We are making great progress here. Okay, here we go. I'm going to use substitution. So this guy's all ready to go for substitution, and this guy over here is saying y equals uh, y minus two equals five x minus twenty. Add two to both sides, and I get y equals five x minus eighteen. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to plug that in for my y up here, and so I get five x minus eighteen equals two-thirds x minus five. Now to make things easier, I'm just gonna multiply everything by three, and I get 15x minus 54 equals two x minus 15. So subtract two x from both sides, 13 x, add 54 to both sides, equals 39, so x equals three. Now I got to go into I'll go into this equation to get my y and I'll go into this equation for my check. So y equals two thirds of three minus five. Y equals two minus five. Y equals negative three. Now I got to do my check. So y minus so here's my check y which is negative 3 minus 2 does that equal 5 times 3 minus 4 does negative 5 equal 5 times negative 1 yes so my answer is 3 comma negative 3 all right i got to fix this one uh, okay, let's keep going. Uh, here we go. It looks like a word problem. Mr. Donald Trump likes to tweet. One day, President Trump likes to tweet. One day he immediately tweets 18 times when he wakes up at 6 a.m. and starts to tweet three times per minute. So kind of at time zero, he's got 18 tweets out there. And then every minute, he starts tweeting three times per minute. So then he has 21 after two minutes, you know, after minutes. And then here's my tweets. You know, he has 24. So we have a starting point and we have a rate. Mr. Lipscomb wakes up, Mr. L wakes up, and he, he just starts tweeting seven times per minute and doesn't start with any. So at zero, one, he has seven. After two, I have 14. So we need to write a linear equation for Mr. Trump. Well, if it's three times per minute, and Mr. Lipscomb is seven times per minute, we know that's a rate. but Trump likes to, Trump starts with 18 and Mr. Lipscomb starts with zero. So Mr. Lipscomb has a slope of seven and a y-intercept of zero. Mr. Trump, on the other hand, has an m of three and a b of 18. So Mr. Trump is y equals 3x plus 18, and Mr. Lipscomb is y equals 7x. Okay. So this is this is our A. This is the answer to A, and this is the answer to B. Wow, we already have we're already off and smoking, you know, cooking with gas. So who will have more tweets after three minutes? Well, after three minutes, Mr. Trump will have 
3 times 3 plus 18, which is equal to 9, 27. Um, all right, this is C. Mr. Lipscomb, on the other hand, will have 7 times 3, or 21. So Trump has 6 more. This box all our answers. D, use your skills to identify exactly how many minutes will have gone by when they have the same number. Well, to have the same number, y has to equal y. So 3x plus 18 equals 7x. So subtract 3x from both sides, and we get 18 equals 4x, or x equals 18 fourths, which is 9 halves. So x, what is x? x is the number of minutes. So after 9 halves or 4 and a half minutes, it's the same number of tweets. That would be exactly how many minutes would have gone by. And at that time, when they have the same number, how many does each one have? So this is D. Well, let's see. Well, they'll have the same number, so let's just go ahead and use B. I'll use the easier equation and say, well, y equals 7x. This is how many Mr. Lipscomb will have. And so that's 9 halves, remember. 7 times 9 halves equals 63 over 2. Whoa, it's 31.5. Can you have half a tweet? No. So it's either 31 or 32 tweets. They never, at this rate, it'll never be perfect. So the, these models aren't always perfect. So I'll take 31, about 31, or about 32. That is our answer. Not pretty. Linear equations that are word problems don't always end up pretty, but I will understand what you're saying. Just kind of make it clear. All right, let's move on. We're on the last page. Okay, simplify. These can go quick. This is our product rule. X times 3 plus 3 equals X to the 6th. This is our power of products rule. This is A to the 4th, B to the 4th. This is our combo power of quotient rule. A to the fourth, Y to the sixth. So we got to multiply that exponent down into both exponents. Oh, this is the one that's tricky. All right, we got to take this negative two and we got to multiply it by every single one. Oh, wait a minute. Let's simplify this first. Let's do that first. Let's not do the hard thing. All right. Well, if we have 2x squared y over 3xy all to the negative 2, we can cancel our y's. We have only 1x. x squared over x gives us 2x over 3. Much, much easier to the negative 2. So that's, we got to apply our negative 2 to each variable. So we get 2 to the negative 2 x to the negative 2 over 3 to the negative 2. Uh, okay, well, now we can just move everything with a negative exponent to the other side, and everything has a next negative exponent. So we've got to move everything to the other side. So let's do that now. On top, we have 3 squared. On bottom, we have 2 squared, x squared. And because the numbers are so small, we're going to go ahead and multiply it out. Whoops, this is not, yeah, yeah. There we go. Ignore them. Ignore my little blurt out. I was going to say something that was wrong. Okay, good. So now 39. What do we do? We multiply all of the things that are the are the same. So if we have we multiply our constants, two times three times negative one, which is negative six. Our a's a cubed times a times a. That's five a's and b one two five b's. Whoa, what is this, this crazy big thing? Oh, but that's just a 1. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. So that's 3 times 1 times 3, or just 9. 
Wow, zero power is cool because it makes problems simpler. All right, here we go. Three to the negative nine times three to the nine is three to the negative nine plus nine is three to the zero equals one. M over n to the negative one is m to the negative one over n to the negative one. You can't have negative exponents in a simplified answer, so we got to move our negatives to the opposite sides. N over m. There's our positive exponents. All right, this is our simplifying radicals. Find the biggest, the biggest perfect square inside 20, and that's four. So this is square root of four times the square root of five. Well, square root of four is two. Root five is just root five. All right, we got to use distribution, and when we, so that's three root three times two root three plus. 3 root 3 times 2 root 5. We multiply the outside, 6. Inside, 3 times, square root 3 times square root 3 is just 3. And over here, our outside, 6 times the square root of 15. So we got 18 plus 6 root 15. One over square root of 10, we got to use, we can't have a fraction inside, so square root of one over square root of 10. Well, that's equal to one over root 10. Now we got to rationalize our denominator, root 10 over root 10, and on top we get root 10, and on bottom we get just a 10. Square root of 10 times square root of 10 is 10. Here, this is simply rationalizing our denominator, root y over root y. Square root of y times square root of y is y on the top square root of x times the square root of xy is square root of xy and on the bottom y root, root y times root y is y so y times y is y squared square root of one fourth is the square root of one over the square root of four which is one over two moving right along Healthcare. Write the number of people in Russia in scientific notation. Well, that's three uh, hundred thousand. So we have to figure out how many times we have to move our decimal. We only go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's three times ten to the eighth people. How much did they spend on health care? Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 2 times 10 to the 12th uh, dollars, because we converted this problem into dollars. They spend rubles or something else, but we do, we're doing this in dollars. Uh, how, on average, how much did they spend per person? So the per tells you that the thing after it's on the bottom. So persons is on the bottom, and how much did they spend per person? So dollars is on top. So let's put our dollars on top, 2 times 10 to the 12th, and our people, 3 times 10 to the 8th on the bottom. So that's equal to, well, we divide these things, and then we subtract our other our, uh, exponents. So 2 over 3 is 0 0.67 if we round, times 10 to the 4th. Well, this isn't in scientific notation anymore because this thing has to be bigger. So this is... 6.7 times 10 to the negative 1 times 10 to the 4th. 6.67 is 6.7 times 10 to the negative 1. And now we go about combining these things. And we say, well, it's 6.7 times 10 to the 3rd. And then they want this. So that's C. And then D, we want to write this as a decimal. So to convert it back to a decimal, we have to write 6.7 and write your zeros, and we have to go 1, 2, 3. And so our answer is six seven zero zero dollars per person. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, just a couple more. Solve using the zero product property. Well, that's, you got to remember what it is. And it says, well, if you have things multiplied together, 
you can set one of them has to be zero. So it's either the, if 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 a, the the product of some set of things is equal to zero, you can set any one of those things equal to zero, and you will get your answer. So those are ors. So this is x equals minus one, or x equals minus two, or x equals minus 44. Don't just say it's one, two, or 44, or you're gonna get this totally wrong. Write it out, write out your equations, and then you will come to the right answer. And so now you have to write this in set notation, negative 44, comma, negative two, comma, negative one, write it in numerical order, smallest to greatest. Similarly over here, we got x plus 4 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. So this is x equals minus 4, or x equals 4. So that's x equals negative 4 comma 4. Or you could write it like this, x equals plus or minus 4. Either way. I'm not sure if I showed you this in class. So this just either way is fine. GCF. Right, we go 55 x squared. Let's do our factoring. This is 5 times 11. This is 2 times 11 times x times x times x. So our common terms are 11x and 11x. So this is our, our GCF. Here we get our GCF of three terms. We have to do it. We have to have the common term for all three. So it's 2 times 3 times a times a times b. Here we got 2 times 2 times 2 times a times b times c. And here we have 2 times a times b. So our common terms are 2. We have 1a each, and we have 1b. So 2ab is our GCF. Almost there, almost there, hang in there. Multiply, we have to FOIL first, outside, inside, last. First, outside, inside, last. Combine ter terms, usually those middle terms are gonna combine for you. Same here, first, outside, inside, last. Inside, last. Combine those inside terms and we get 12 a squared plus two a minus 30. Okay, we're almost there. This is the last slide. If you hung in there, you really are working hard. So here, this is a GCF factor right here. This is a, uh, oh, this is a quadratic with A equals to 1, and this is a quadratic with A greater than 1. So let's do this guy first, our GCF. Our GCF 6XY, that's 2 times 3 times X times Y, and not negative 9X, that's negative one times three times three times x. So our, our GCF is three x, and our leftover up here is two y, and down here is minus three. So it's our GCF times our leftovers. And then we can check if we want. That's six x, y, minus 9x. Okay, now we need two numbers that multiply to negative 35 and they add to negative 2. So that's going to be uh, a bigger negative and a smaller positive, and that would be negative 7 and positive 5. So our answer is a minus 7 times a plus 5. Don't go ahead and say x minus 7 times x plus 5 and get your, this guy's wrong. Don't do that because it's A. Don't lose a point by getting the wrong variables. Okay, 
Our last problem, there's a lot of ways to do it. Some of you do this differently. But remember, I taught you the tricky, I taught you the, you know, the kung fu way, the kung fu, the magic way. This isn't my invention. I saw this is, but this is by far what I've seen to be the easiest. So you multiply the first by the last and rewrite this guy like this. These are not equivalents. These do not equal each other, but it's part of the trick. You rewrite that like this, then you factor it. And remember, in, my, in lesson, in day number uh, 12, I think I taught you this, or maybe it was day 11 at the end. So that's A minus 9, A plus 8. That's how you factor this. And now the next thing you do is you divide both, you divide both of the, these guys by 6. A minus 9 over 6 times A plus 8 over 6. Now you simplify and you get A minus 3 halves and A plus 4 over 3. Okay, and the next thing you do is you take this thing and move it in front of the A, and then you're done. 2A minus 3 and 3A plus 4. And you are done. This factoring has never been so easy for when A is greater than 1. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I've seen some very confusing ways. This one is just a trick. This is a trick. These are not equivalent. You can't just say these aren't equivalents on the way down. This is just how you perform the magic trick. All right. Um, Google Hangouts. All right, we're going to stop the broad. Well, let me just uh, let me just say bye. Last, this was the last video. Hopefully, this was helpful. I'll be seeing you in math class, and I hope you just all kill it on the final.